Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. Uh, when I did, what I did get to see was uh, one individual still in a tent, uh, you know, with some activists who were near him, watching this line of bulldozers and city workers really lining up. So the big camp not getting cleared today. The city announced Friday afternoon that they were pausing. The word they used was pause. Um, I would like to say thank you to the mayor and the city of St. Louis for allowing us to stay for a little bit more time. I'm Sarah Fenske. Four homeless encampments in downtown St. Louis had been ordered to clear out by today. Those orders came 10 days ago from the city and the Missouri Department of Transportation and involved a camp of about two dozen down by the Mississippi River, as well as three other small encampments beneath highway overpasses. Now, last week on this show, St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones defended the eviction notices. She said the goal has been to transition to permanent housing, and she said the city has enough shelter beds for people being displaced. Well, advocates pushed back on those claims, and on Friday, the city announced it was pausing the eviction of the Riverfront Camp but that the three smaller camps would still be cleared. Well, that pause was great news to camp residents like Trina Scott. I'm happy. Um, We finally are getting the chance to be heard um, and understood, which is a big part. Um, I would like to say thank you to the mayor and the city of St. Louis for allowing us to stay for a little bit more time. The city's got a lot going on. You know, and they're already full to capacity of of issues that they need to deal with. We don't want to be a part of that issue. We just want to be left alone. And that is Trina Scott. She's a resident of that Riverfront Homeless Camp. She spoke with our producer, Danny Wisentowski, this morning, and he joins us now. Danny, welcome. Great to be here. So, Danny, this pause, this was a big reprieve for the main camp, which is near Laclede's Landing, but there are three other smaller ones in its shadows. What was happening there this morning when you were on site? You know, like you said, at the larger camp, life was kind of going on as it does in the morning. People were getting ready for their days, drinking coffee, but really a short uh, distance away at these overpass camps, uh, you saw uh, vehicles, uh, a large bulldozer. I got to see police vehicles, people who were setting up and getting ready to do uh, what the city has done with some of these shelters in the past, which is really clear them and completely erase them from where they were to put all of the possessions into a dumpster, to allow the residents some level of time to get their things together. But this is a, a really a, a clear cut Um, destruction of these residences and these tents. And so there were these three smaller camps kind of in the shadow of this bigger riverfront camp. Do we know if those residents are planning to leave at this point? Do they see the writing on the wall? It wasn't clear to me when I visited there this morning. Uh, when I did, what I did get to see was uh, one individual still in a tent, uh, you know, with some activists who were near him, watching this line of bulldozers and city workers really lining up. And what I was able to observe, uh, sort of at a different part of this overpass, where it looked like there had been another shelter or tent, were city workers with big, heavy shovels just picking up the last items of, you know where a person had just lived. Mm. So these people are, are going to be now moving on. It appears the city is serious about those plans. The Missouri Department of Transportation also involved. This is technically their property, so they've been working in conjunction with each other. There was also a protest on site this morning, and here's what these protests sounded like. Evictions are an act of violence! Evictions are an act of violence. Evictions are an act of violence. 
So, Danny, you captured that audio there on the scene. What did you see at this protest? Are these residents protesting or, or these are outsiders? So the, these were activists and people who uh, you know I've recognized and have been, uh, I think, showing up and trying to put some presence and some level of documentation uh, to these uh, clearing of these areas. Uh, when I uh, had a chance to watch what happened at Interco Plaza in December, uh, in September, uh, that is, when about 50 people were cleared uh, who are, had been living in this plaza uh, near downtown as well. And I think there has also been this effort that people should be uh, documenting this to watch it, to take photos, and also to help. There is so much that is happening as people are trying to pick up and move all of their worldly possessions. And so I think there's a lot of, of support uh, from these activists who want to you know, lend some human effort, um, but also a sense that these things should be documented and we should be seeing really what happens when you clear a camp like this. So the big camp not getting cleared today. The city announced Friday afternoon that they were pausing. The word they used was pause on this eviction. What did they say about why? You know, it's not uh, entirely clear, you know, the decision between the large camp and the smaller ones. Uh, what I can say is that some of those smaller shelters and, uh, you know, where the tents are, they are a bit closer to where some of these streets are and where there might be busier traffic. The larger encampment is, you know, sort of off the uh, a main road or the main place where traffic would be. It's covered. And, you know, it's a little off the beaten path. You have to kind of go looking for it if you want to get there. And so maybe that has set up some differences. But this pause doesn't really tell us very much about why it happened. And it doesn't give us a good timeline, certainly, for when the next development might be. So the city could still, they could unpause this. They could resume this eviction at some point. Um, They're saying that they're looking for, they want to enhance non-congregate shelter bed options ahead of the closure. Some of these residents have been outspoken to our other producer, Kayla Drake. They don't want to go to shelters. Is that part of this to maybe give them some better options? You know, I think that level of not wanting to get into a shelter is very prevalent. And especially when you have a a community, you know, a group of people who create these ties, create these friendships, uh, create these mutual support networks. Um, These just aren't the sort of things you see when you're living alone or if you're in a shelter and have to find a new arrangement every single day. Um, And so I think it's not clear when that would happen with Interco Plaza, as I said, that incident, uh, there was some crime. The city kind of announced there's a reason we're clearing this now because you know things have gotten to a place that they can't be allowed to remain. That hasn't been the case at this camp. You're not mm-hmm. seeing those level that level of, of fear or worry over uh, you know crime or vandalism or things like that. So I, I think we're still at a place of, of a lot of question marks here. So earlier we heard from Trina Scott, a resident of this downtown riverfront camp that, where the eviction is now on pause. Um, Danny, you asked Trina what would happen if her encampment does get cleared and residents lose this community that they feel they've been benefiting from. They'll fall apart. Uh, To be honest with you, uh, sticking together as a community, it makes us stronger. Um, I've always been told, like, it takes a, a village to raise a child. That's true. It takes a village to raise anybody. A lot of people are afraid to be alone. And with a community like this, we're safe. Uh, we don't have to worry about being alone. We all look out for each other. That's why staying together is so important. You know, uh, I think they should take up uh, an area, a piece of land, and allow us to go on it and continue to, to live our lives the way we want to live them. And that is Trina Scott um, speaking of this idea of maybe an intentional encampment. Now, the city had proposed that. They couldn't get buy-in from the aldermen. The situation, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, Danny. I imagine you're going to stay on top of this. Yeah, we can only kind of keep following the situation and, and seeing uh, you know, the way that these city policies affect the way these people are building, as you say, their intentional encampment and ways they're living their lives. Well, Danny Wisentowski, thank you for joining us today. Great to be here. This episode was produced by Danny Wisentowski with audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Doerr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? 
suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.